This is Bucharest, the capital city of Romania. Bucharest has an extensive transportation system, featuring numerous highways, bus lines, 73.2 kilometers or 45.5 miles of trolleybus infrastructure, 144 kilometers or 89.4 miles of tram tracks and 5 metro lines. A lot of these, especially the metro, have been constructed under the former communist dictator Nicolae Ceausescu. Like Adam Something likes to say, smooth brain dictator plus construction project equals dumb shit, and you bet the brain of Ceausescu was smoother than Megamind's bald head. In this video, we'll take a look at the construction of the Bucharest metro and on the construction of one special station, directly influenced by the former dictator couple. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Similar to other former communist countries, like Czechoslovakia, the Bucharest metro was opened in the 70s. However, the first plans for a metro system in Bucharest were drawn up in the early 20th century. During that time, negotiations about the construction of numerous tram lines with the German industrial conglomerate Siemens were underway. Because of the high price of set lines, it was proposed that a metro line would be built instead of tram lines. However, this proposal went nowhere. More metro projects were planned in the 1930s and 1940s, but due to trams being more convenient, and later, due to World War II, these plans ultimately went nowhere as well. After the war, there was no time or money for subway construction, as the country had to be rebuilt from the war. As was common in other newly communist Central and Eastern European countries, a series of purges and show trials plagued Romania shortly after the war. After this was done, and after the economy got out of the toilet, it was time for another metro proposal. Another serious push to build a metro system in Bucharest came in the communist metro building wave of the 70s. In 1972, the government established a council to draft a concrete plan for the Bucharest metro. The country's dictator couple, Nicolae and his wife Elena Ceausescu, had direct influence over the planning and construction of the city's metro system. Because both had no idea about transportation planning, this resulted in quite a bit of fuckery. We will get into this later. In 1975, construction of the metro system started, and on the 16th of November 1979, the M1 metro line was opened. On the 19th of August 1983, a segment of the M3 metro line was opened. Three years later, on the 24th of January 1986, the first part of the M2 line was opened, with the second part opening a year later in 1987. All three lines were continuously extended over the years. While taking a look at the station designs on the M1, M2 and M3 lines, which were built during communist times, there is a clear deviation of design choices from other communist metro systems. Looking at the metro systems of Moscow, Prague or Budapest, we can see that lots of the stations are truly grand pieces of architecture, with art pieces, murals and other similar things. In contrast, stations on the Bucharest M1, M2 and M3 metro lines are pretty bland, with no grand displays of architecture or art present. After the Ceausescu couple was deposed and dealt with, and the communist dictatorship fell in 1989, two more metro lines were opened. Line M4 opened in 2000, and Line M5 opened in 2020. There is one more line under construction, M6, which is slated to open in 2027 to 2028. Now that we've got the history of the system out of the way, let's go to the aforementioned planning fuckery, courtesy of the Ceausescu couple. First of all, while looking at the western part of the M1 line, we can see that it's built directly under the city's river, running along it. While this probably wasn't done under Ceausescu's direct order, I can't imagine that the engineers made this choice independently. Tunnels are usually not built parallel to rivers because of the risk of water leaking into the tunnels. Studies show that the human body doesn't like drowning inside tight tunnels, so why it was built like this is beyond me. If you know the reason, please let me know in the comments, I'd like to hear your opinions. What definitely was ordered by the Ceausescu couple was this, the Piata Romana station on the M2 line. Looking at a picture of it, one thing is striking. The platforms are about as narrow as the chance of a Tesla Cybertruck not breaking down. This was done on purpose. When the M2 line was being planned, the proposal was presented to the Ceausescu couple. The dictator's wife, 
Elena Ceausescu noticed that there was supposed to be a station at the Bucharest University of Economic Studies and a prominent square called Pieta Romana. Elena Ceausescu thought that the students of the university were becoming fat and needed more exercise, and so she called for the cancellation of the Pieta Romana metro station. Because disobeying the dictator and his wife's wishes would be a great way for the engineers to get a quick visit by the secret police, they obeyed and axed the station from the plan. Or at least it looked like that. Thankfully, the engineers had enough foresight to know that the station at Pieta Romana would be necessary for the future. Because of that, the station was built in secret, covered by thick walls to hide the station and its platform. Because of the need for secrecy, the platform had to be made narrow, so its construction could be plausibly explained as unrelated construction work. After the full opening of the M2 line in 1987, trains passed through the walled-up station at full speed. However, pressure for the opening of the station was mounting. In response, the station was finished, prepared for regular passenger service, and the walls were knocked down. Ultimately, on the 28th of October 1988, the Pieta Romana station was opened and added to the M2 line. In the end, the Ceausescus met their end in 1989, and Bucharest's metro system has expanded massively since then. I think the story of the Bucharest metro, and especially of the Pieta Romana station is interesting, and how the wishes of two people can shape entire transit networks, used by hundreds of millions of people each year. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with three membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell and Arrow Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! In 1972, the government established a council to draft a concrete plan for the Bucharest metro. The country's dictator couple, while taking a look at the station designs on the M1, M2 and N3 metro lines, which were bl Bro! First of all, while looking at the western part of the M1 line, we can see that the <coughs> studies show that the human body doesn't like drowning inside tight tunnels. So if you... Huh? What the f... <laughs> when the M2 line was being planned, the proposal was pre... <laughs> Bro... Uh. I think the story of the Bucharest metro, and especially of the Pieta Romana station is interesting and how the wishes of two people can shape entire transit net... Mm.